for one more attempt of this before I'm forced to take drastic measures and do it off camera. That uh, rewind knob is stopping me coming in at the appropriate angle there, so I'll just remove that from the camera. And that support post for the top cover allows me to get my screwdriver in at the right angle. That's it. Check that that lever can move. All right, well, just make sure that screw is tight. That's good. Now I've got to fit the return spring in place. Having a look at my return spring, it's a very small light spring. One end is open. If I stretch that over that screw head, it should be in business. There's a toothpick. Toothpicks are great for helping you manoeuvre things about. Particularly things like the calcitrant ends of springs that do not want to uh, go where you want them to go. That's it. So, I got that lever on the wrong side of that one. Oh, I think I have. Okay. That's better. Right, so as I swing the film advance lever, you'll see it cocks the shutter. That swings this lever down, or it allows this part to move down, it allows this to drop down. The top of this comes up underneath the film advance lever and stops the action. So then, of course, all you can do is return it to the rest position. So that's done. That's good. I'll just Tighten that retaining collar because it's rattled its way loose. Now put the stud back in the top of the camera here, which, which will support the top cover. Next, well next I need to reattach my flash connection here. So I'll go and do that. Alright, I'm going to start uh, putting things back in place. Now here there was a little cover plate at this point. I 
And that was just an insulator. It's not exactly square, it only fits in one way. That's to stop that flash contact from shorting against the body. So, flip this over, tuck a little bit of that wire back down under there. See if I can get my cover in place. Sitting a bit high, I think that uh, wire is sitting up under there. Just feeding that wire back down into the body cavity slightly. See if that'll... That should be a bit better. That looks okay. And I should have... Four screws here for this. These screws aren't hard to identify because I can see the colour of the adhesive that's on them. Likewise on this side of the body, we have a cover. That's good. And I have leatherettes to go on here. Now the leatherettes have got a shim on them, a metal shim. And that's job is to cover these screw holes here in those big countersunk plates so that they uh, fit correctly. This side had an extra shim on it. So I'll get some adhesive and I'll glue those that shim onto this side and I've got to tuck some adhesive down in between the shim here and the leatherette that's peeling away a bit. I'll put some adhesive down there and likewise some there where it's peeling away a bit. Otherwise I'll just leave those shims on that leatherette. It's not worth the fight of trying to remove them. Um, I'm only likely to end up with trouble. Now these are very thin sh steel shims. And this one in particular is just to level up this chrome piece for the ed front edge of that body. It needs to sit down there, not overlap the casting because that's obviously the right height there anyway. I'll do this leatherette first. I want to put some adhesive 
between the leatherette and the shim where it's peeling away a little bit. That should do the job. And now some adhesive on the leatherette itself. And that shim of course. These leatherettes are quite tough. They're more robust than um, leatherettes that I'm typically seeing on the Kodak Retina cameras. The cloth base for the leatherette is obviously very robust. It's um, A bit of corrosion around the body edges there, That's we're stuck with that. That's not going to go away. That's okay, That's you've got to be up close to see that. And the same deal with the leatherette on this side. So a little bit of adhesive in between the shim, if it's peeling away, there it is little bit in there. The rest of it seems sound. This side you might notice there's a little notch missing out of here. That's still on the camera body. There's a very thin piece of leatherette between the flash contact and the, and the center of the body. That's still present. So once this is glued back in place, that little uh, defect will be entirely invisible. Making sure I get the adhesive spread evenly. Particularly, particularly being careful to get to the edges. Particularly the outside edges because that's where you're most likely to come in contact with it with your hand and um, if it was loose at that point that's where it could be disturbed. So I'll get this leather it seated around that flash contact. It's very tight fit around that flash boss. It's no wonder the other piece didn't want to come off. Probably jammed in there. That's good. Roll that over the body. That looks very good. And see if I can rub off some of this excess adhesive that's squeezed out the edge there. This adhesive ADOS F2 is a contact adhesive really, that's how it's designed to be used. So on your spreading stick it dries fairly readily. Um, you can use that to rub over the loose bits of adhesive, it'll just pick them up, rub them away very readily. So there we have it, there's the leatherette back on the front of the camera. That looks nice and neat. And now the base. This cover can go back in place with its four screws.
I haven't bothered trying to clean the old adhesive off the base plate there. It's a very thin and even layer and uh, where I did clean it off on the other surfaces it took a lot of effort and basically it didn't achieve a hell of a lot for all the work that went into it so I'm not going to bother. So I let it to go back on the base plate. Now there are some little paper washers here or discs really that sat on top of those screw heads and their job is to make sure that the leatherette sits nice and flush. I'm just checking the what's here. I've still got the remains of some of those on here. That one looks like a whole piece. Which one's that? That's my back back one there. So this one, this one and this one, I just want to put one of those paper washers or paper discs on each. They just go straight on top of the screw heads and it's just to make sure that the leatherette will lie flat. Won't be sinking into a, an obvious depression. Which one did I say it was the front one and the back one, right. That should be fine. Now the leatherette for the base. I need a bigger piece of paper to spread my adhesive on that. This will be just the thing. Now it was a bit of a fight getting this leatherette off. All of it was a bit of a fight really. It was well stuck. Um, often with retinas there's been surface uh, corrosion on the, on the body underneath the leatherettes which makes the adhesive effectively let go. That's not the case with this camera. I can get this adhesive spread neatly. I need to make sure I get some on this thin front edge. That'll do. That will do. Well I was concerned that possibly I'd stretch that leatherette in the process of getting it off but seeing how snug that is around that central boss there for the tripod socket it certainly, um, if it was stretched it had certainly sprung back because that was a very snug fit. It had to be stretched to go over that boss. I'm just rubbing this round here to pick up any stray edges of adhesive that squeezed out. That's it. That's nice and neat, nice and flat. That's good. Now this camera back, this was one that came off another Bessomatic that I put on here because the original one of course had been severely thumped in. Um, you can tell the difference because this one says West Germany on the back. And the one that came on this camera originally was just plain. It didn't, didn't say that. So there's our camera body so far. What have I got to add to this now? 
Well, really, the prism has to go back in next. I've detected that my focus screen or the condenser on the top of the focus screen is all clean and tidy. There was a small piece that went in here. It's got a like a foam dust seal at this end. Doesn't seem to appear to do anything else useful. Here's my prism. And I'll give that bottom surface a final clean. Now the pr dealing with the prism was um, a bit more problematical than I expected. Trying to get rid of the old piece of foam that had been stuck to the top of the prism was quite difficult. It was crumbly so there were little crumbs of sticky foam to be got rid of. And I used some acetone to uh, clear everything away and that proved not to be not a particularly useful thing to do because it started shifting the paint off the prism, the black paint. Alright, well that's all in place. Now the prism in this camera is held by the top cover. So I'm just going to remove the advance knob at the moment, put my top cover on temporarily and check the image in the, in the finder with a lens on the front and see what it's like, see what it looks like. I should put a piece of foam on top of that now because otherwise it'll just fall loose. Well, you can see I've stuck some foam inside the top cover there. Just checking the rear surface of that prism, see, make sure that's clean. I'll put my top cover in place. And I can feel that I've got pressure in the, the centre there. I can feel the tension so I know that it's pressing down on that foam and therefore pressing down on the prism to keep it in place. So I'm just going to pop these four screws in place that hold the top cover down. It's quite a, uh, it's an unusual method of holding down prisms to just use a piece of foam rubber from the top cover. I have seen other cameras that do it. It's, um, it's almost like the manufacturer ran out of enthusiasm towards the end of the job and then just decided I'll bugger it. A piece of foam rubber will do just as well as a clamp. It does mean that if you're not expecting that to happen, if you remove the top cover and tip the camera back, the uh, prism, of course, will just come tumbling out. Which could be a bit of a disaster. Now it looks good. I can see light through the front. Let's put a lens on there and see what it looks like. I'm most interested in seeing if it's a good, clean, bright image. That's good. That's a nice, clean, bright image. Um, no problem there at all. That part is done. So, what's left to do? And take the top cover off again. Well, obviously the return spring for the film advance. The adjustment knob for the frame counter and the shutter release button all have to go on before that top cover goes on.
The shutter release button has got a flat on one side so it can only go into the top cover in one direction. I'll probably put that in place and hold it with my finger like this while I'm lowering the top cover in order to get that in position. This little adjustment knob for the frame counter. Just looking at the centre of that is it's got a little hollow in the top and it's got a piece of leatherette in there. It's a tiny tiny piece of leatherette because of course it's a tiny tiny hole. I don't know why they went to that length and why it didn't just make it a plain top. I'm sure they had their reasons. The return spring. For the film advance. It goes on this way. And as I recall, that was quite tight. I'm going to wind this up carefully. Of course, it's if it gets any twist in it, it'll want to get away. I don't really have any control over what twist it's got in it because that's uh, simply the result of previous activity by persons unknown. I'm hoping it will stay there while I'm lowering this top in place. That was the shutter releasing. Why is this top cover not sitting down in place? Now it is. Four screws in the top cover. I don't think our return spring was dislodged. I think that's probably where it was supposed to be. So there is every likelihood that it'll, the film advance lever will go back on correctly. This being the parts camera as required or if required or the good one that I've got to return. The other camera had a problem, a, known, a noted, noticeable problem with the film advance lever. And the problem with its film advance lever, let's see if I can get this on there. It doesn't want to rotate. Let's see if I can encourage that around. Oh, because the re return spring, of course, is now encouraging that back the other way. See if I can get a little bit of movement on there. I can. Yes, the other one had a problem, and the problem was that the advance lever was obviously sitting much too high on top of the camera. And I thought that might be some complex problem. I thought that there may be perhaps the wrong advance, film advance shaft on the camera or something of that nature. That turned out to not to be the case. This is working fine. It turned out to not be the case at all. It was just simply that this collar here was loose. 
And in this case, I can see that this one had previously been locked with a bit of adhesive. This one was loose too. It's not loose now, and I'm going to make sure it stays tight. I'm going to use these pliers to get it. These were circlip pliers once upon a time, uh, snap ring pliers. And they've had the ends adjusted with a grinder. So I'll just make sure that's done up tight. And I'm going to put a, not going to put glue, I'm going to put a drop of lacquer on there. because it will be quite obvious what I've done and when it's quite obvious what I've done it'll also be quite obvious to the next serviceman how to deal with that particular problem and typically the answer is a bit of acetone a bit of acetone is usually the answer when anything look, that looks like lac has been used to lock something in place. That'll do. Doesn't need much. It's just to discourage that from coming loose. I'm just checking this quite carefully because I've got to get the prettiest bits back with the other camera. This is just the leftovers. This is just the dog tucker camera. And it has been quite good to uh, remind me about Bessomatics in general and to educate me on the Bessomatic M in particular because it is by no means the same. Now that's just a dial, a reminder dial. That could just about go in any particular position it wanted. There's a little plastic washer there. And a disc on the top that you could set to put a very couple of colours on it. And presumably it's so that you could remind yourself whether you had daylight film in there or artificial light film. Because we don't generally see much film made for use in artificial light these days, but once upon a time it was a thing. It's very tight and very difficult to move to the extent that no, it might be okay. I don't know if this disc has anything to locate it on the camera. I suspect not. No, it does not. Where would I put it if I was putting it somewhere? I would probably put it there. And I'm just using this 
pair of stiff tweezers to uh, that's good that's fine in order to do that up it doesn't really require any more than that what have we got here well the rewind knob the rewind knob so that just screws on the top and the leatherette patch for the top of this knob that can go in place Oh, that was very, very convenient. I got an open box of cotton buds, Q-tips for you uh, Americans, and that was the sound of it falling off the table. So they're scattered all over the place at the moment. Here we go. So there's my Bessematic M, all good and going. And um, as you might notice, this one at the moment has got a Kodak lens on it. Um, but it will work quite nicely with Voigtlander lenses or Kodak lenses. And I'm very pleased to have it back together. Because, oh, it's fair to say it's given me to run around a little bit. Not least of all because I damaged that take-up spool and had to go to extraordinary lengths to uh, get that all back together again. However, that's my parts camera. Now I know how to do one of these and I will do its better looking big brother and get that back to the owner. Thanks for watching. So, did the Voigtlander and... Uh, Kodak project have a good ending? Well, I would say so. Here we've got our Bessomatic M, all serviced. Instead of the plain ground, ground glass screen that it originally had, it now has the split image screen from the earlier Bessomatic that I'd used as a parts camera. As you can see, it's had the mount all altered and it can now happily accept. Kodak S type lenses and here we have the Kodak Retina Reflex S this has been serviced it's all nice and clean and tidy a good example and as you can see I've modified the lens mount in this one as well so it's quite happy accepting Voigtlander lenses in this case the Voigtlander Kaleskopo X so, that was an interesting project. I've done um, a fair bit of work getting to this stage because I've also serviced the parts Retina Reflex S. I'd started with that to see how well it would clean up. It came up okay. It needs a new prism really, but otherwise it's fine. And of course I serviced the other Bessomatic M camera because I needed one to practice on really and uh, that was the one to do and that camera of course was um, needed some extra help because the back door had been thumped in and the chassis had also been thumped in as well so they needed straightened up of course it was entertaining when I was doing that particular camera because I managed to break the take-up spool and, and had to glue it all back together but never mind the main thing is these two cameras are going back to their owner and I'm sure he'll be pleased to see them of course they're not leaving immediately because we're in lockdown here and the post offices are shut so I can't actually ship anything home until the end of the lockdown which may be at the end of this four week period or just as likely it'll be extended for another two or four or who knows six weeks still in the fullness of time these will be going back to their owner thanks for watching